<clears throat> you may be seated. Welcome, ladies and gentlemen. We're done with the last officer's testimony. And the city or the state calling your next witness. State calls first sergeant Peter Vargo. Sir, would you raise your right hand for us? Yes, Your Honor. Do you swear the testimony you brought to be the truth, the whole truth, and nothing but the truth, so help you God? Yes, sir. Thank you. Put your hand on. And he will be on video. This match. Could you state your name and spell your last name for the record, please? Yes, it's Peter Barco. Last name spelled A as in Peter, A R E O. And Mr. Barco, how are you employed? Uh, I'm an active view. I can't hear him. You what cut out a little bit there. Yeah, I'm off. I apologize. I'm an active view Marine. I still can't. Active in the Marine? Oh. Yes, Your Honor. Okay. How long have you been active in the Marines? 18 years. In the course of serving in the military, did you come to know a man named Joshua Aid? Yes, I did. Now, do you see Mr. Aid on any of your screens? The judge will not on my screen. If you can just wait a second, the judge will move the screen. Yes. And um, are you able to identi identify what he's wearing? Uh, it could be a purple or blue shirt, gray tie, stripes. Okay. Your Honor, I would ask that the record reflect that the witness has identified the defendant. This shirt. How long have you known the defendant? Approximately 15 years. And do you also know a woman named Rebecca Borkowski? Yes, I do. How do you know Rebecca? Uh, we've served together in the Marine Corps. You've served together in the Marine Corps? Yes, that's correct. How long have you known her? About the same amount of time, 15 years. And how would you describe your relationship with each of them? Uh, co-workers, uh, Acquaintances, I've hung out with both. You uh, got a handful of times, but not on a regular basis. Okay. I'd like to direct your attention to the evening of August 4th, 2020. Where were you living on that day? Uh, Oceanside, California. Okay. Are you originally from Wisconsin? Uh, yes. Do you still follow social media in Wisconsin? Yes, on Facebook. On August 4th, 2020, did you see something online that concerned you? Uh, yes, I'm not sure which news outlet it was, but they had posted uh, Josh's picture, and uh, that's when I found out about the situation. Okay. And what was the nature of the situation that was in the posting? So object the posting just said that uh, objection. law enforcement was looking for him. Just a minute. Okay. Objection calls for hearsay. It's asked by the state just for context of what he was calling Joshua about, and it will be relevant to the conversation he had with Joshua. As a result of what you saw on Facebook, did you call? Uh, yes, Your Honor. Mr. A, thank you. We're there the same way. We'll sustain the objection. And did he answer the phone? Yes, he did. What did you say to him? I started the conversation. I asked him if he's all right. I, I didn't know what was going on exactly. Um, in fact, I didn't know Rebecca was part of this at all at that time. Um, he, he said, yeah, everything's fine. And I explained to him that he followed the news. I, 
I didn't. Right, he said, uh, why would I be on the news? Excuse me, I can't. Uh, oh, hold on a second. I can't, I can't hold on. understand them. If, if oh. you can't understand them, no one else can. Okay. So you're going to have to take control of sure. So if we can just slow down, let me ask you a question by question. So okay. you saw this post on social media and called Joshua A that night? Correct. Okay. And um, can you just say briefly and slowly and as close to your mic as you can what you said to him? I asked if he was all right because I did not know what was taking place. He said that he was fine and I explained to him that he saw over the news. When I said that, he asked, why would I be on the news? And I explained to him that the news reported that he had hurt some people. And he just said that he was just on his way home from work. Can you repeat that, that last part? He said what? On his way home from work. He just stated that he, he was on his way home from work. And you said this happened on the 20th? I'm sorry, this was on August 4th, 2020? Yes, that's correct. Okay, and this was a social media alert that you saw on August 4th, 2020? Correct. And do you recall about the time of night that that conversation had taken place? It would have been between 9 and 10.30 p.m. Central Time. Can you describe his tone of voice in that call? It seemed very calm, um, not startled at all with what I explained home. Did you try to talk to him further after he indicated he was just driving home from work? I tried to dive a little deeper, but uh, the conversation wasn't going anywhere. So at that time, we got off the phone, and at that time, I called uh, Oshkosh uh, Police Department. And um, you called them after this conversation on August 4th? That's correct. Okay. And was that call from your phone number ending in 7180? Yes, that's correct. Do you recall how long that call was? It could have only been a few minutes at most. Did he provide you any information about anything happening with Rebecca on August 4th? No. Do you, do you know what happened? Did, let me back up. Did anything else happen relevant to this shortly after your call with him? Uh, I'm not sure if I understand the question. Sure. Are you aware of him being taken into custody that night? Shortly after I called Oshkosh uh, Police Department, I saw a kind of the news outlet that I had been taken into custody. No further questions. Any cross examination? Yes, sir. Mr. Fargo, can you hear me okay? Yes, sir. Now, how many years did you serve with Josh Aid? Uh, I've known him for about 15 years. And on August 4, 2020, you were junior in rank to Josh, correct? Uh, same rank. Were you junior in service time? Yes, I believe so. And you testified that you tried to dive deeper with Josh about what you had observed on social media, but the conversation wasn't going anywhere, correct? Yes, sir. So Josh clearly did not want to speak with you about this, correct? Uh, it would appear so, yes. And then you later called the Oshkosh Police Department, correct? Yes, sir. In fact, you told the police department that based on what you knew of Josh, if anything had happened, it would have been self-defense on Josh's part, correct? 
I, I'm not sure if I made that statement. Uh, in our call, I, I might have though. No further questions. Any regret? No, Your Honor. Thank you, sir. Thank you for your service. Have a great day. All right, thank you, Your Honor. Thank you. State can call their next witness. State call Sergeant Cody Knabel. Do you solemnly swear that the testimony you're about to give shall be the truth, the whole truth, and nothing but the truth, so help you God? I do. Thank you. Can you have a seat and a witness, too? Thank you, sir. Have a seat. You can kind of pull yourself up. You don't have to be right on top of the mic, but not but pretty close. And then uh, only one person talks at a time. She's taking everything down. It's up to you. If you're comfortable, you may remove your mask for testimony. Can you state your name and spell your last name for the record, please? Cody Knable, K-A-N-A-B-L-E. And how are you employed? I'm a sergeant with the Greene County Sheriff's Department. How long have you been employed in that capacity? Uh, almost 14 years. Is the town of Monticello in your jurisdiction? Uh, the village of Monticello is within Greene County. And can you just explain to the jury where about that's located in the state of Wisconsin? It's approximately two hours and 15 minutes from the city of Oshkosh, uh, due south of the city of Madison. I'd like to direct your attention to August 4th, 2020. Can you just describe how your department became involved in the investigation of a shooting incident that occurred in the city of Oshkosh that day? Our dispatch center received a teletype computer message from Oshkosh Police Department requesting that we attempt to locate Joshua Aid, who was a suspect in a homicide within their city. His residence was within Greene County, just west of the village of Monticello. And um, is his address a Monticello mailing address? Yes, it is. What did you do upon receiving this relay? Myself and several other deputies responded to the area near his residence and then discussed a plan and attempt to make contact with him at his house. And did you have a description of the vehicle he was expected to be driving? Yes, within the teletype message, we were provided that he was driving a red Toyota 4Runner and they provided the license plate with it. Is your squad car equipped with video recording devices? Yes, it is. Do you also wear body cam? Yes, we wear body worn cameras. And did your department submit to accurate and unaltered versions of your recordings from that evening? Yes, they did. Did you locate the suspect vehicle? Yes, we did. Can you describe how and where this happened? The suspect vehicle was located on County J approaching the residence, and as it turned into the driveway for the residence, uh, we activated our red and blue lights and completed a high-risk traffic stop on the vehicle. And did you make contact with an individual later identified as Joshua Aid? Yes, I did. Do you see Joshua Aid in the courtroom today? Yes, I do. And can you identify him by what he's wearing? Uh, he's seated directly in front of me wearing a blue collared shirt with a gray suit coat. Okay. So the individual to my left? Yes. Okay. And I would ask that the record reflect that the witness has identified the defendant. Good job. Was there anything notable to you about the, sus about, um, the defendant's demeanor as he stepped out of the vehicle? I noticed as he came out of the vehicle, he was very unsteady on his feet. I'd like to um, show you a portion of your squad camera. This is on the State's Exhibit 7, which is the thumb drive. It would be 7G, uh, labeled Enable 1. And this will be 55 seconds to 2 minutes, 26 seconds. Can I 
if we could just turn on the lights, please. Why am I being detained? 
Sergeant, so Oshkosh, I'm the Sergeant, all right? Oshkosh Police Department has an investigation that they identified you as a suspect in the case. They are on their way down here to talk to you, okay? So until then, you're gonna stay with us and we're gonna make sure you're okay, all right? I'm gonna have uh, a paramedic just come check you out. Have you had a little bit to drink today? No. No? Okay, do you have any mental health or, or medical concerns that I should know about? No. Okay, six coming. All right, we're gonna help you up on your feet. We'll have you sit in the back of the car, okay? Yeah, you have 800 come this way to just check him out. Okay. All right, to a knee, to a knee. We're just gonna push you up on your knee, okay? Yep. Yeah. All right, No. Can you put my wallet back in my back pocket? We're gonna put all your stuff right on the hood for right now, okay, Josh? I really appreciate you being cooperative with us. I mean, you know, I don't know what I did that you guys are doing. Okay. Alright, we'll put them in the back of four. Go ahead. Ten four, I'll take him up here. All right, just take a seat, Josh. Oh, first, yeah, that's one. One, one second. That's good, man. Just watch it. 55 and 14, can go 42. Yeah. All right, I'm just going to close this, okay? I'm going to wait for... So does that video accurately depict your first contact with uh, the defendant, Joshua Aid? Yes, it does. And it appears that another deputy was handing you uh, a firearm in that video? Yes, he did. Um, and was one of the other deputies that responded a deputy Breister? Yes. And was he one of the deputies who actually uh, recovered or was with the defendant on the ground when the firearm was recovered? Yes, he was. Okay. I'd like to play for you a portion of his body cam, and this would be... This would be on Seeks Exhibit 7. It would be 7I, Breister 1, from 2.50 to 4.06. Sure, you're right. I have not got to lock those. We still got to search him, so. <laughs> you got to search me, and I will tell you that in my what? Okay, yep, I'll get you. I have a pistol. Oh, where's that? What, you called that? Oh, sorry, 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 sorry. I'm not reaching for it. Okay, where's the pistol? Where's the pistol? Don't reach. Huh? Okay, I'm gonna roll this way. Yep. That is my concealed carry. Who can I have a concealed carry from that? Yeah, we got one. Check what you said. What's your last name? What's that? What's your last name? A I G E. Okay, thank you. Okay. I'm gonna roll you to your side, okay? Yeah. I'm gonna get you on your butt. Okay? That's yeah. fine. Yep. I, what, what is going on right now? Well, it's in the second detainer right now. What's that? You're being detained right now. So we're at the first slide here? Yeah. Okay. okay. You can, you just, can you describe the pistol that was removed from his pocket there? It was a black, small frame, semi-automatic pistol that was in a cloth holster. Moving on, I'd like to play another portion of Reister's video, that would be 750 to 826. You doing all right? Mm, fine. Yeah. You all right? Yeah. Okay. I was just checking on you, make sure you're okay. <laughs> I, don't, I don't know what I'm being detained for. Okay. Well, there will be someone to talk to you about that, okay? Well, I understand that, okay. and I respect that, right. whatever you guys are doing. Okay. All right. Well, hang tight, and they'll get with you as soon as they can, okay? This doesn't make sense to me. You guys just ambushed my driveway. Okay. 
All right, we'll get, we'll get with you soon. So while the defendant was sitting in, let me back up, was that your squad he was transferred to? Yes, it was. While he was sitting in your squad, did a uh, paramedic or EMT come and look at him? Yes, a paramedic did. And what is the policy of your department regarding having a paramedic or EMT look at someone in certain types of arrests? Usually it's locked up to the decision of the supervisor that's on duty, and I had requested them to stage close to us prior to coming in contact with the defendant, and then since we had contact with him, I just asked that he get a basic medical assessment. Okay. And did you actually observe any injuries to him that caused you to ask for that assessment? No, I did not. So we already talked about your squad being equipped with recording equipment, so I would just like to uh, go back to some of the uh, recording from your squad car, and we're going back to Canable 1. This would be 1915 to 23. Yeah, we'll get with get to you get that information to you soon, okay? 
Yeah, because, like, I'm stuck in the back of the car, and I don't know why. I'm not going to be here much longer. Anything else? Any medical issues? Any complaints? Anything at all? Nope. Just uh, wondering why I'm being detained. Okay. Well, I have no idea on that one, but... All right. Okay. Well, thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. you know why I'm being detained? We'll do everything with you. Right there. 20 to 3810. Question. Can I, can I ask you a question? What, what am I being detained for? And am I being detained tonight? They're going to come talk to you, okay? Yeah, I don't understand no. yet. I don't. I don't know what this is about. I don't, I don't understand. Who's going to come talk to me? And 39.16 to 40.25. Josh, this is Deputy Mayor. We are going to give you a ride um, up to Oregon where you're going to be handed over to Oshkosh Police Department, okay? Yeah, that's not happening. Okay, what, what, what am I being charged with? Right now you are under arrest. They will inform you of the charges up there. I don't understand what I did. Okay. okay. It's their investigation. We're just assisting them, so. All right, you want to step out of the car for me? So what, what did I do? That, that is, you will have to talk with them about that because I do not know the details. Yeah, I don't know the details either. I drove home. All right, that's why we're trying to take you up to them. All right. All right. We don't know what's going on here. Yeah, all right. All right. Can you just step out of the vehicle for me? Yeah, I can step out of the vehicle for you. And I, I can be compliant. Just want to up first one, all right? Yeah, I can be compliant. All right. I, I really appreciate it, all right? I mean, I'm not trying to be a dickhead here, all right. but, like, what what is going on? I would really like to know what's going on. Seventy nine fifteen. So that that was all uh, audio from your squad footage. Yes, it was. And you testified previously that you didn't observe any physical injuries to the defendant at all, correct? That is correct. And we heard his conversation with the EMT there, but just to be clear. Are you aware of him ever complaining of physical injuries to any of the officers in your department? Not that I'm aware of. Are you aware of him ever reporting to any of the officers of your department that he was the victim of any sort of crime? No. Where was Joshua A. taken by officers after leaving the driveway there? He was transported by Deputy Josh Mayer to the Oregon Police Department. And what happened with his vehicle? Uh, the tow truck arrived on scene and it was impounded and secured in a uh, evidence garage at our agency.
handed you what's been marked as State's Exhibit 47. Can you describe what that is? This is the Green County Sheriff's Department evidence receipt form. Um, Your Honor, I would ask that State's Exhibit 47 be moved into evidence. Any objection? No. Except the receipt. Are you going to be on video anyway? Uh, and can you just describe um, the evidence that was uh, located and where it was located? The first item that I had collected was a silver uh, handgun magazine that was loaded, and that was located on the defendant's person. The second item was the small frame black handgun with a cloth holster, and that was located on the defendant's person. Person. And the last item of evidence that I collected was a black cell phone that was on the dash of the vehicle. And was all that evidence turned over to officers of the Oshkosh Police Department? Yes, it was. No further questions. Cross examination. Thank you. Officer Knabel, uh, you conducted the search inside of Joshua Abe's vehicle? No, I did not. You testified about the evidence uh, that was collected that night, correct? The three items that I collected, yes, sir. Yes. Did you collect anything else from inside, or anything from inside Josh's vehicle? Just the black cell phone that was on the dash. Did you observe uh, any open alcohol? Not that I can recall. Now, when you were first had contact with Josh and you effectuated the traffic stop, he was cooperative, correct? Yes, he was. He placed his hands outside of the window when commanded, correct? After multiple commands, yes, he did. And he exited and followed your directions to walk backwards, correct? Yes, he did. He laid down when ordered to? Yes, sir. And. He advised officers that he did have a carry concealed pistol on him, correct? Yes, he did. And he directed the officers to where it was on his person. Yes, he did. He made no attempt to try to pull that pistol on you or fight with officers, correct? No, he did not. And this happened, this arrest happened at Josh's farm in Monticello, correct? Yeah, uh, rural Monticello, yes. And in that area of coming from Madison, you'd have to pass through New Glarus, correct? Yes. And that's where he said he was coming from, New Glarus, correct? That is what? That is where he, Josh said he was coming from, was from New Glarus, correct? That is what he told the paramedic, yes. And he asked you multiple times uh, why he was being detained, correct? Yes, he did. And he also asked a number of times what he was being charged with, correct? Yes. It's not uncommon, is it fair to say, that uh, people who are being arrested, especially as assistants from other agencies, want to know what the charges are? Yes, they do. And it's not uncommon to try to gather information from the officers regarding what they know or what's being said about them, is that fair to say? From the other agency, that would be common. So really none of this struck you as uncommon, what Josh was saying or during his arrest, correct? No. Thank you. No further questions. No further questions. Just ask that the witness be released from his... Any objection? No. You're released from your subpoena. Thank you, Your Honor. Thank you. And the state would move in at 7 G, H, and I. I 
Thank you. Always, only one person talks at a time. She's taking everything down. And it's up to you. If you're comfortable, you may remove your mask okay. while you're testing. Detective, can you state your name and, and spell your last name for the record, please? Paul Fry, F R E Y. And how are you employed? A detective for the city of Ashcroft Police Department. How long have you been employed in that capacity? I've been with the police department for about 28 years, and I've been a detective since 2007, I believe. Did you participate in the investigation of a shooting at 1715 Minnesota Street in the city of Oshkosh? Yes. What information did you have about the incident when you came on the scene? Uh, initially, that three people had been shot. Uh, one was deceased at the scene. Uh, two had been taken uh, to the hospital. The uh, suspect was still at large. I'm going to ask you to look behind you at State's Exhibit 1, the map there. I'm going to hand you a laser pointer and ask you to circle both uh, the scene of where uh, the incident occurred and then the area that was formed off as the entire crime scene. So the uh, initial uh, incident. Oh, hold on, let's grab you a mic. So the initial incident uh, would be 715 Minnesota Street here. And then uh, following suspected uh, blood trail led us to uh, 1719 and then also 1727 on Minnesota Street. So uh, in the area of those three uh, residences. Okay. And what was your role in the investigation that night? Uh, to help uh, document the scene and then assist in the collection of evidence. And in collecting evidence, did you participate in searching both the house and the garage? Yes. Do you know who the homeowner was at that location? I believe it was the residence of uh, Ms. Borkowski. I don't know if she owns that residence or not. And did she give consent to officers to search her home and entire property that night? Uh, I believe I ended up obtaining a search warrant. And uh, is it often practiced that you obtain a search warrant even though you have consent? Yes. Did you find any evidence inside the home that was determined to be relevant to the shooting outside? No, I don't believe we did. Did you find any evidence that either, let me back up a minute, did you come to know the name of the other surviving victim? Yes. What is his name? Uh, John Miller. Did you find any evidence inside the home that either John Miller or Rebecca had entered the home after being shot? We did not know any blood uh, leading into or inside of the residence, so no. And based on your understanding of John and Rebecca's conditions, would you expect to find blood in the home if they had entered after being shot in the head? Yes. And again, you found none inside the home? Correct. Did you locate some firearms inside Rebecca's home? Yes, I did. And do you know what they were? Uh, in a downstairs bedroom on uh, Nice stand next to a bed. I found a nine millimeter uh, handgun, and then upstairs there was a, probably what was a bedroom that set up as an office. Uh, and in there I located another nine millimeter handgun, 
a 22 caliber handgun, and then in that same room in the corner against the wall was some type of um, semi-automatic rifle. And when you search people's homes, do you take pictures prior to engaging in the search? Uh, typically we do, yes. I'm going to show you what's been marked as States Exhibit 35, and I would just ask to publish it, it's already been admitted, as well as States Exhibit 36. Exhibit 35, a picture that you took of Rebecca's living room prior to searching her house? Yes, one of uh, some general overview pictures of the inside of the residence. Okay. And again, that was before your search? Yes. Okay. And now, States Exhibit 36 is a zoomed in picture of that rocker chair on 35. Do you see that? Yes. you had searched and several days after responding to the scene, did you become aware that there was an additional firearm owned by Rebecca in a purse under those pillows on States Exhibit 36? Yes. Okay. When it zoomed in there, do you see um, a canvas colored strap there? seen uh, a zoomed in picture of that chair which uh, appears to be a strap. I'm not sure this is that same angle or not. Okay. And can you just describe, well let me back up. So in searching Rebecca's home, was part of what you were looking for firearms? Yes. Okay. Are you aware uh, that an officer at Kowalski responded to the home the following day on the 5th? Yes. Okay. Do you know why he was at the home? Uh, to pick up or get the two dogs and a cat that lived there. Okay. And I'll get back to that in a little bit. But can you explain how it... Let me back up again. I apologize. As part of what you were looking for, were you looking for firearms? Yes. Okay. And can you explain how it might be that a purse with a firearm in it was missed? Um, honestly, it should be found, um, but certainly things can be uh, missed or overlooked. Um, you know, the individual may have been searching that room and then called by someone else to assist and then picked up in a different area where they left off. Things like that could lead to something like that being missed. Were you also involved in searching the garage? Yes. Can you describe that search? At that point of searching the garage, we still believe that we had not found one of the shell casings and one of the bullets because we were told that three people had each been shot in the head apparently one time. Um, Ms. Borkowski, the bullet was still in her head. Uh, the bullet fired at John Miller had apparently passed through his mouth and on the other side. And the deceased, uh, Mr. Gruner, um, did not appear to have any type of an exit wound. So we had accounted for two bullets and still were looking for the third. And we had found two shell casings on scene, but not the third. So we searched that garage specifically at that point looking for uh, you know, shell casing and a bullet which would be smaller items like that. And then you searched when you were searching the garage, were there did officers find any firearm in the garage? No. I'm going to hand you what's been marked as States Exhibits 
Um, by that uh, item there, is that where you had identified there was another 380 shell casing? Yes. Okay. And is it 52? Is that a close up of the 380 shell casing? Yes. And is it 53? Um, now, when we're looking at this exhibit and I'm asking you questions, I'm going to ask you some questions about that blue bin there. But when we're looking at that exhibit there, 53, um, what did you believe that red staining on the ground to be? Uh, I believe it was fly. Okay, and moving on to exhibit 54, uh, what's notable about that bin there? Uh, what turned out to be uh, another 380 shell casing right there. And moving on to exhibit 55, is that a close up of that 380 shell casing? Yes. So now, with that, you've accounted for all three shell casings? Yes. Did officers collect those three shell casings as evidence in this case? Yes. Moving on to State's Exhibit 56. Now, there's a flashlight shining on something. I'm going to move on to Exhibit 57 so it can be seen clearly. What was that expected to be? A uh, spot of uh, suspected blood. And Exhibit 58. Uh, oh. What appears to be some um, blood uh, in the grass area marked by that orange cone. Okay. And Exhibit 59. Is that a close up of the blood you just described? Correct. And did officers also locate blood in the driveways to the south of Rebecca's home? Her neighbors to the south, I should say. Yeah, I walked that path and into the next two driveways directly to the south and found spots of what appeared to be blood. And if we could just move on to exhibit 60, 61, 62, and 63, would those all depict the spots of blood that you saw in the neighbor's driveways to, to the south? Yes. Are you aware of whether officers took swabs of the blood in Rebecca's driveway, garage, and grass? Uh, Detective Robertson did, yes. And uh, detect did Detective Robertson also swab the blood in the driveways of the two homes to the south of Rebecca's? Yes. In the entire area that, um, that you guys that night, was there any weapon located? Uh, Let me back up. The area outside of Rebecca's home, was any firearm located? No. Now you described searching the, the garage very thoroughly looking for these small items. Do you believe that if there was a gun in the garage it would have been found? Yes, I do. On August 6, 2020, did you travel to the coroner's office for the autopsy of James Grutner? Yes. During the autopsy, was a bullet removed from James Grutner's head? Yes. And did you collect that bullet as evidence? I did. And did you submit it into evidence at OPD so that it could be tested in this case? Yes. Now, I want to go back again just briefly related to the purse that was missed in Rebecca's home. So you saw the picture that you had taken prior to the search. Uh, did you also have a chance, let me back up, you saw the picture prior that you had taken prior to the search, correct? Correct. And you testified that you were aware that Officer Kowleski went to Rebecca's home the next day related to her dogs? Yes. Have you had a chance to view uh, any body cam from Officer Kowleski's visit to the home? Yes, I did. 
does it appear from the picture that you took before your search to the body cam that you viewed from the next day that that area on her couch was just undisturbed? It looks the same in my picture as it does in his body camera, yes. So would that indicate to you that the area just wasn't searched? I believe that's correct. I'm going to play a couple portions of that body cam you're referencing. This would be on States Exhibit 7, and it would be 7J. We'll start with uh, 307 to 312. Eight ten to eight seventeen. I'm going to just ask you to pay attention to the strap-like material there. Did you do it No, I don't know. In that video there, was it clear that there was a strap there? Yeah, it appeared to be between those two pillows when they were moved. No further questions. Thank you. Uh, could you just replay, Mike? I would ask that we just replay from 810 to whatever the stop time was of the exhibit from the state. He testified that it appeared that there was a strap there when the pillows were moved, correct? Yes. And in fact, it appeared that when that pillow was moved, that bag or purse, whatever it was, was opened up, did it not? I don't know. I see like the strap and maybe a silver buckle or item. Now, you're dispatched to the scene. Correct. Did you see any other items there besides the strap? Yes. Yeah. Did you see the crime scene vehicle, correct? Yeah, I responded from home. Ended up picking up that vehicle and then heading to the scene. And that's the vehicle that is used to process, would it be fair to say, large crime scenes or serious crime scenes? Yes. And you obtained a search warrant or had been provided a search warrant that had been obtained to search Rebecca Markowski's house, correct? Yes, I believe the detective virus obtained the search warrant. And pursuant to that warrant, you searched the interior of the house, the curtilage, the area surrounding the house, and the crime scene itself, correct? Correct. And could you identify again on exhibit one of the states, the large map behind you, what that defined crime scene was outside of the house? The, the, the photograph of the overhead? Oh. So the residence itself, uh, yard, garage, uh, and then as I said, the blood trail led into these next two to the cell. And so that was the search area in the crime scene? Yes. And that's the area that you and other detectives meticulously searched for drops of blood and everything else that you testified that was located here today, correct? Yes. And that crime scene did not extend across the street at all, correct? Uh, not that I'm aware of, no. You were kind of the one in charge of the overall search operation, is that fair to say? No, I would say I was one of several that uh, were involved in uh, the crime scene. 
to your knowledge, though, you just testified that the crime scene was on the same side of the street, correct? To my knowledge, knowledge yes. yes. And you or nobody else that was searching at your direction or at your assistance, to your knowledge, searched the street or across the street, correct? Not that I personally am aware of, no. And you're personally aware of the search operations done here because you testified uh, about items discovered by Detective Robertson, correct? Correct. And by Detective Wilson, correct? Uh, items discovered by Detective Wilson. One of these shell casings, was that not discovered by Detective Wilson? Correct, also? correct. And who had located blood drops and other items of evidentiary value, correct? Correct, I'm aware of who did locate certain items, yes. So again, is it kind of fair to say that you were the, the, the detective in charge of the overall search operation and evidence processing on the scene that night? No, I wouldn't really say in charge of. I ended up documenting uh, items that were found. Um, but we all played different roles in processing that scene. People brought to you the items that they had found so that they could be cataloged or documented, as you just testified, right? Yes. And as you just testified with the search outside of the residence in the area around the garage, I think your testimony was you, you searched those areas very carefully looking for small items, correct? The garage uh, and that immediate area where we have been told that this shooting took place, yes. Now while you were searching outside, you discovered that shell casing that was in the crack of the cement, correct? Yes. And you did not locate, though, during that search, um, a bullet or uh, a bullet fragment outside lodged in the cement, correct? Correct. That was, I believe, the next day that that was located. Now, regarding the search of the house, you searched that as thoroughly to your understanding at the time as the garage for evidence of the Now, uh, Detective, I've handed you what's been marked as Defense Exhibits number 25, 26, 27, and 28. Can you identify what exhibit number 25 is, please? Uh, honestly, I can't. I do not believe these are pictures that I took. Um, I took pictures of the firearms from the house at the scene. I don't believe that I took these. But you took the photographs of the firearms at the scene? Yeah, at the scene as I found them and recovered them, I photographed them. Does the photograph of exhibit number 25, is that consistent with the firearm that you had found at the scene? 
Uh, it would be helpful to compare to the scene photos, but two 9mm pistols, a rifle, and a 22 caliber pistol were uh, all found at the scene. So at the scene, you had located a 9mm bread, correct? Uh, would it be possible to review my report? Sure. Yes, a 9mm Beretta, uh, a Caltech 22 caliber semi automatic pistol, and then a Ruger 9mm pistol along with uh, a rifle. So I'll just take up from here. So, do you recall now during the course of the search of the interior of the residence, you were able to locate, or with the assistance of other detectives during the search, what was located was three handguns, correct? Correct. And a rifle was collected, correct? Correct. And these handguns were located in uh, different locations within the residence, correct? Um, one individually in one bedroom and then three together in an office area. And there was also an air rifle, correct? Uh, correct, it was with the uh, actual rifle being against the wall. And the weapons were located on different floors, right? At least one of the weapons was located on the first floor? Correct. And that was the 9mm pistol that was located in the bedroom? Yes. And the other weapons were located upstairs, correct? Correct. And there was no other weapons located inside of the house, correct? Correct. And during the search, you were searching for any and all firearms, correct? Correct. And you testified now earlier on, on Cross that to your knowledge, the house that you had searched it thoroughly, correct? I can attest to what I did personally, yes. And the other persons assisting in the search was Detective Brett Robertson, correct? Oh, there were several others. And Detective Jeremy Wilson, correct? Correct. And Detective Chi Bain, correct? Correct. Now these are all detectives that have significant training and experience, would you say, in conducting executions of search warrants of residences? Just to add that, Sergeant Nelson was also present during the search. Uh, and yes, experienced detectives. And Sergeant Nelson, uh, as well, is an experienced officer in conducting searches, correct? I don't know as far as conducting searches. Uh, he's obviously an experienced officer. He's a sergeant, right? Correct. And based on your knowledge of the operation of Oshkosh Police Department, uh, it takes a significant amount of experience and competence, and competence to rise to the level of sergeant. Would that be fair to say? Uh, there's a process for sergeants. Um, I don't think you want to answer that question. <laughs> you can, though. Uh, there, there's a process for sergeant that involves different tasks that are scored, and they select uh, the candidate. Do you know what a CSO is, right, detective? Uh, as 
sir. Community yes, service sir. officer. Yes, sir. Yes. yes. Kind of like an officer, possibly in training, or somebody who wants to be an officer, right? Yeah, I would say officer in training, um, a civilian aide, I would say, probably. There is no type of CSOs or rookies, you might say, that were involved in this search, right? No. And you testified that throughout the course of the search, uh, at the beginning on direct examination, if there was a weapon found in a purse, or a weapon in a purse, it should have been found in the search, correct? It should, it should have been, been found, found, yes. And based on your training and experience and your work with these officers, if there was a weapon inside that living room, it would have been found, correct? It when you executed the search warrant. It should have been found. Uh, clearly it appears that it was not. Well, you make that based on the fact, you made that statement just now based on the fact that days later, somebody turned in a weapon that they alleged was in the house, correct? Correct. But for that allegation, to your knowledge, that house was searched and all weapons were found, correct? I, I, I believe a weapon was missed. That house was searched. Uh, I believe on the information that it was missed. It looks like that area, uh, for whatever reason, and, you know, cops aren't perfect. Things obviously can be overlooked, but I think that area failed to be searched and it was missed. Because somebody brought in a weapon later that they said was in there, correct? Well, when I look at the body camera image compared to my photos, uh, it doesn't look like that area was disturbed or searched and moved. Those items were taken off of there. So that, that's what I base that on. I don't think it was searched. Well, it's not like TV when you search a house, you don't flip tables over or trash the residence, correct? No, we, we don't trash the residence, um, but it should be done thoroughly, and that's going through things, moving things. You know, it's not just a gaze around the room. It's a search, and that's how it should be done. And you put things back after you move things often, correct? Not really in the same way they were. I, I think that's almost impossible to do. Uh, and sometimes, by the fact, by not putting it back exactly the way it was, it shows that it was searched, and that can be helpful. But unless you don't take a before and after picture of every item that you search, fair to say, that That's you move. Correct. And you pick up a mattress and look underneath it, you put the mattress back down, right? A lot of times we'll lean up against the wall. Um, instead of putting it back down, and that gives us more room to pile other things that we've gone through, things like that, so no, not necessarily. You don't leave every cushion that's been upend that's been looked under upended on a chair, correct? Probably not everyone, no. <clears throat> now, you were at the autopsy of Jim Gritner, correct? Correct. And you also discovered a pill during the course of that search, or during the course of that autopsy on Mr. Gritner, correct? Yeah, I believe um, the doctor or one of his assistants did, and then it was turned over to us, yes. And that was a pill of diazepam? Correct. Now, just as you had testified on direct examination that that garage was thoroughly searched and there was no weapons in it, you can't state that with any type of certainty at all then based on your testimony regarding the house, correct? I believe that there was not a weapon in the garage based on my participation in that search with others and the way that search was done. I don't think we missed a gun in that garage. And when you would have walked out of the house that night after the search, you would have had the same opinion, correct? A little bit different because the garage is one area, wide open. We're all in view of each other at the same time, working together to search that one small area. When you're searching a house with a basement, two stories, maybe an attic, you can all be on different floors where you're not really seeing what other people are doing. 
the search of the garage was different in that manner because we were all there at the same time. We were all looking for the casing, the bullet. So you could see what each other was doing, and I would describe that as a very thorough search of that garage. The Tahoe, though, was parked essentially down the middle of the garage, correct? It was to the south end of the garage. But there were areas being searched on one side of that and people searching on the other side as well, correct? Correct. And you can't see through the Tahoe, same as an interior wall, correct? Correct. Did you search the car, the white Ford Focus? Yes, we searched the two vehicles in the driveway and then the Tahoe in the garage, yes. Did you search the Jeep as well? Correct. It was during the course of the search of the garage that the Oshkosh defense bag was found, correct? I believe Detective Robertson located that, yes. And inside that bag there was a 380 caliber Smith & Wesson magazine, correct? Correct. And that had ammunition in it, correct? I believe so, yes. And was the trash and recycling bin searched as well? I didn't personally, so I don't know specifically. No further questions, thank you. Any regret? Just briefly, um, when you investigate or detectives investigate a shooting in a residential area, is it common to uh, canvas the area for neighbors? Yes. Now, we heard testimony from a man named uh, Tom Dorman uh, of 1726 Minnesota Street. Can you just circle that with the laser pointer on Exhibit 1 there, the residence marked 1726? And that residence is across the street from Rebecca's, uh, at this on the opposite side of the, the street as Rebecca's house? Across and down, yes. So does it appear that officers did cross the street that night? Uh, yeah, they made contact with him at the house, clearly they did, yes. And was the street blocked off during this investigation or could anyone just pass through? A blocked off. Okay. And was that while officers were canvassing the area? Yes. Now, all three firearms that you found of Rebecca's were located inside her house, correct? Uh, there was actually four found inside the house, yes. Thank you. They were all inside the house? Yes. And just so I'm understanding your testimony, when you reviewed your picture that you took before the search, and then reviewed Officer Kowalewski's body cam of that same chair, did it appear to you that the items on that chair were completely undisturbed? Yes. And is that why you're indicating that you don't believe that that purse or that area was searched at all? Yes. No further questions. Are you across? Yes, sir. A canvas is when officers go door to door to see if anybody's heard or seen anything or has any information, correct? Correct. A canvas is not a search, right? Correct. After the search of the house was completed, were you the last one out of there to secure it for the night? I don't recall. No further questions. No further questions. Can you stand up? Yes. And when's the next witness going to be? Um, she'll be pretty quick on my end. She'll be what? Pretty quick on my end. What's the caller? State call Sharon Morgano.
No. testimony you're about to give shall be the truth, the whole truth, and nothing but the truth, so help you God. Thank you. You can have a seat over in the witness stand. person talks at a time because she's taking everything down and as you have already done you may remove the mask if you want if you're comfortable with it. Can you state your name and spell your last name for the record please? Sharon Morgano M-O-R-G-A-N-O How do you know a woman named Rebecca Borkowski? She is my niece. Do you know a man named Joshua Aid? I do. Have you ever met him? I have. Do you see him in the courtroom today? Yes. Do you identify where he's wearing? Yep, the blue shirt, gray jacket, and a striped tie. Individual to my left? With glasses on, correct. I just ask that the record reflect the witness has identified the defendant. The child. From your understanding, how is the defendant connected to Rebecca Borkowski, or what did you understand his relationship to Rebecca to be prior to August 4th, 2020? They were dating. And then August 4th, 2020, did you become aware of a shooting involving Rebecca? I did. How did you become aware of that? I received a phone call from my brother. Are you pretty close to Rebecca? Yes. Where did you go when you learned that Rebecca had been shot? To the hospital. And was that to be with Rebecca and family? Yes. While Rebecca was still, well, let me back up. Do you know about how long Rebecca was hospitalized after being shot on August 4th? You mean at Mercy or Freighter or? In total. In total. Oh, um, a week, a couple of days, five days. And would she have been transferred right from one hospital to the other? Yes. Now, while Rebecca was still hospitalized, did you visit her home at any point? I did. Can you tell me when you went there? For, when you went there first? Wednesday. Okay. Would that be the day after the shooting? Yes. Why did you go there that day? To clean. And what area were you cleaning? The garage in the driveway. Was it, were you cleaning the blood from those areas? Yes. While you were in the garage, did you find any gun in the garage? No. Did you enter the home at all that day, that Wednesday? I did, did yes. Okay. And what was the purpose of that? To get some cleaning supplies. And where in the house did you go to get these supplies? The basement. At any point that day, did you enter Rebecca's living room? I don't think so, no. And after that, Wednesday, did you go back to Rebecca's house again while she was still hospitalized? I did, yes. And when did that happen? Thursday. And why did you go there on Thursday? To clean, find your wallet, transfer mail, help, do some, just to help. And had Rebecca asked you to go there, or how did it come to be that, that you did that? I don't fully recall. I think I just went to help. And can you describe what happened as you were there on that Thursday, August 6th? Um, 
Yes, I was in the house looking for her wallet or purse and looked in the kitchen area first, um, went into the dining room, front room area, and saw a strap on a recliner on top of a pillow and thought that was her purse for her wallet, so I picked it up. And what did you find, if anything, inside the purse? A gun. Are you aware that Rebecca's a gun owner? Yes. Was uh, finding a gun in a purse at her house at all concerning to you? No. I'd like to show you what's been marked as States Exhibits 35 and 36. They should be in front of you there on the desk. I'm sorry, what, what number is 36? Uh, 35 and 36. Okay, yes. And if I could just publish that to the jury while I ask this witness a question. Does that appear to be Rebecca's living room as, a, as you're familiar with it? It is. You to that chair that's in the distance, the rocker, is that where you located the strap of the purse? Correct. Now moving on to States Exhibit 36. Can you describe where the strap is that you saw? It's that tannish grayish piece um, draped on the pillow underneath um, the blanket. And is that about how that area looked when you arrived there on the 6th? Correct. And what did you what did you do with the purse or the items in the purse? Uh, While well, looking for her wallet, I put my hand in the purse, realized that was not the purse that I was looking for, um, wrapped the strap around the purse, and put it in her bedroom nightstand. Did you ever even, um, well, you indicated that this wasn't something that was surprising or concerning to you, correct? Correct. Did you even mention to Rebecca that you found that purse? I didn't. And at the time you went there on August 6th, that was two days after the shooting, are you aware of Rebecca having left the hospital at any point prior to that? No. At some point, <coughs> did you become, at some point, did you report to officers of the Oshkosh Police Department what you found? No. And um, at some point later on, did you become aware that Ashcraft Police Department officers were keeping Rebecca's guns? Yes. Okay. And um, at that point, did you participate in reporting to officers what you knew about this gun? I didn't know until after the fact. Uh, let me just ask you, how did it come to be that you reported what information you had about this gun to officers? They called me. And were you aware that they would even be calling you about this? Yes. And how did you become aware of that? My other niece told me. Okay. Uh, at any point, has Rebecca asked you to fabricate any information about what you did that day? No. No. No further questions. Oh, thank you. No, oh, ma'am. When you spoke to Detective Artis, um, that was September 14, 2020. Does that sound about accurate? Correct. And you advised him that you were at Rebecca's residence on that Thursday, August 6, correct? Correct. And you did not tell Detective Artis that you were there the day before, correct? I don't recall, but I don't think so. 
And if we could have the state's exhibits back up again, I believe it was. Exhibit 36. And do you see that, ma'am? I do. And I believe you testified that's essentially what it looked like, the uh, strap of the uh, purse when you had discovered it on August 6th, correct? That is what it looked like, correct. And it appears that someone had placed a pillow over the top of the purse, is that fair to say? No, it's the blanket. And that, so there's a blanket that's been put on top of it, correct? Correct. And there's also, is it behind that first pillow? Correct, it's kind of tucked in between the pillows and the blank, blanket. So it appears somehow someone had placed a, a pillow and a blanket, a pillow in front of the person, a blanket over the top, correct? Okay, yeah. Well, because the purse wasn't just sat there like that, or does it appear the way it's sitting there, it's kind of hard to see. It, it was exactly as, I, as it stated right here that I saw it. Yes, ma'am. And so the blanket was on top of it, and there was a, that pillow that we see is in front of it, correct? Correct. Now, did you spend uh, all day there on August 5th, 2020 cleaning? No. Were you there in the morning? No. What time did you get there? 3.34 o'clock after the scene was cleared. And you were cleaning up outside the driveway, correct? Correct. And Did you, you, you just on your own, or did somebody request that you help clean up the blood? I was with my brother. Your brother asked you? I was with my brother. And so you cleaned the cement, correct? Correct. Did you locate any bullet fragments out there when you were cleaning the cement? No. And you entered the home on August 5th to get cleaning supplies, correct? Correct. And then you went back again on August 6th, correct? Correct. Now, did Rebecca know that you were going out there on August 5th? No. But they knew that you were going back on the 6th? My sister did. But to your knowledge, Rebecca didn't know that you were going out on the 6th? No. So who asked you to get Rebecca's wallet? I don't recall if my sister did or if I just wanted to be helpful. And while you were inside then looking, looking for the wallet, is when you discovered the uh, purse strap, correct? Correct. And then after you found the gun, you moved it? I did. Why did you move it? Because she usually keeps it in a bedroom. I was on a nightstand. I, I don't know. I... So you're close with Rebecca, is that fair to say? Yes. And you know she keeps her guns on the nightstand, correct? Yes. But there was no other guns on the nightstand when you went and put this gun? Correct. Further questions? Any regret? No, Your Honor, I just ask that this witness be released from her subpoena. Any, re any objection? No. Be released from your subpoena. Thank you very much. Now well, is a good time to break for lunch, ladies and gentlemen. Have a good lunch. Rise for the jury.
be seated. Where are we at from the state perspective? Uh, six more witnesses, Your Honor. I expect they'll be done today. I guess it's possible that one might still be tomorrow. Okay, so let's be back at 12.40. Thank you. We'll start again then. Thank you. 